In this lesson, we're going to take a look at measures of center, and we're going to focus on two specific measures of center, the sample mean and the sample median. And I'll talk about some of the pros and cons of using the sample mean or the sample median. So first, I want to start with our data set. I have a real simple data set, which you can see up here in the upper left hand corner. I have the values that X takes on as one, three, four, five and seven. Each of those values only occurs one time. So what I did to help us kind of visualize what's going on is I created a simple histogram, which you can see over here at the right. Each of the bar heights are one because each of those values occurs one time. And then I just used um, in a, a, a bin that put these centered at uh, uh, one, three, four, five, and seven respectively for the data. So the first value I wanna talk about or the first measurement I wanna talk about is the sample mean. The sample mean is our first measure of center, and we typically denote that as X bar. Um, and then in the numerator, this kind of thing that looks like an E, that's a capital sigma. That means to sum up the values of X. And then in the bottom of this uh, fraction or the bottom of the equation, this N represents our sample size. So let's go ahead and work through this problem and see what this uh, gives us. So in the numerator of our data set, that's just saying to sum up the values of X. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the value of one, add that plus the value of three, plus the value of four, plus the value of five, plus the value of seven from the data set. And then in the denominator, the sample size N, that refers to the number of values that are in that data set. So we have five values in that data set. So the denominator is going to simply be the value of five. In the numerator, when we add those up, you'll see that that adds up to be 20. And then in the denominator, that's still five. 20 divided by five is going to be four. So our sample mean X bar is equal to four. So what exactly is the mean? I like to think about um, a childhood uh, toy that we used to play on when we were on the playground called the teeter-totter. And over here in the picture with the histogram, I think this is going to help illustrate that. So with the teeter-totter, you probably got on at one point with one of your friends. And uh, if you were the skinny kid, you probably scooted way back to the back of the teeter-totter to get it so it's perfectly balanced. What you technically found is your mean weight. So when you think about the sample mean, think about that as being the balancing point of the distribution of data. So I'm going to draw a little uh, uh, wedge right here that's going to symbolize our our fulcrum for the teeter-totter, and that's right at four. And I'll just label that X bar equals four. And so in our picture right here, since it's perfectly symmetric, that teeter-totter is level or perfectly balanced. But what happens to that mean if I take this individual on the end, the value of seven, and I move it to the right? Well, if I move it to the right, it's gonna make the teeter-totter become unbalanced. The goal of the mean is to keep that teeter-totter perfectly balanced. So if I move this value of seven to the right, the mean has to slide to the right to keep it balanced. And if I take this value of seven and I push it to the left, it's going. the mean is going to have to move to the left to keep that picture perfectly balanced. So think about the mean as being the fulcrum of the teeter-totter and it's keeping the distribution of the data perfectly balanced. Now, all of the values within the data set will influence the mean, but values on the ends of the data set, which could be extreme values or outliers, I'm not saying that these are in this case, those can have a significant influence on the mean pulling it in an extreme direction, okay? So remember, if we have values that are outliers on the right, it's going to be pulling the mean to the right. If we have values that are outliers on the left, it's going to be pulling the mean to the left. So that's one of the disadvantages of using the mean is it's influenced by all of the data points, but those extreme values or outliers can have undue influence on what that value is for the mean. So now the next measure that I want to talk about is the sample median. The sample median is the middle value of the data set when the data is arranged in order. It really doesn't matter if it's ascending or descending. And there's a number of ways that you can find it. You may recall from middle school where your teacher taught you something where you take and you cross off one value on the, the, the value farthest on the left and then cross off the value farthest on the right. And you keep doing that until there's exactly one or two values left in the middle. In our case, in this data set right here, we can see that we have exactly one value left over in the middle of the data set. If we happen to have 
two values left over in the, the middle of the data set, we would have to take the average of those two values. So we'd add those two middle values up, we'd divide by two. In this case, we only have one value left over in the middle. So our, our median value, and we typically denote that with the X with the tilde or the X with the squiggle over the top of it, and that median value happens to be four. Now, what is the difference between the mean and the median? So let me explain that with talking about those extreme values or outliers. So think about this once, this value of seven, seven right here on the end of the data set, if I change that value of a seven to a 17, with the mean, what that's going to do is it's going to pull the mean to the right. It's gonna physically move it. Now the median value happens to be a location within the data set. So if I change that value of seven to 17, it's gonna have no influence on the median whatsoever. That median is gonna remain in the middle or the center of the data set. I could change this value of seven to 117 and it's not going to move that median, but it will certainly influence the mean. So whenever you're dealing with data, you should be asking yourself questions like, why is the mean being used and not the median for this situation? Or why is the median being used and not the median? So one example that I'll, I'll point out is the US Department of Labor and Bureau of Statistics, they have this handbook called the Occupation Outlook Handbook. And they talk about median salaries for different professions in, in this Occupation Outlook Handbook. And the reason that they use the median value is because salary can, uh, can vary by a great amount. So for example, you could have a group of people that are classified as accountants, but you may have an accountant that earns millions of dollars a year, all the way down to an accountant that only earns $50,000 a year. If you have one individual that's extremely larger than all the others, and they included that individual in the data set, that's going to cause the mean value to look like it's significantly larger in terms of this salary of those individuals. Whereas if we look at just the median value, it's going to give us the mid middle value and it's gonna, in a way, kind of ignore that extreme value or that outlier, so it's not gonna have undue influence on the center. So there's appropriate times to use the mean and the median, and we have to differentiate when that is appropriate to use the mean versus the median. So hopefully you got something out of this video in terms of understanding measures of center. In future videos, we'll be talking about other things like measures of variability um, and then measures of location as well.